In this video, we're going to look at starting to add products and their categories to the JigoShop shopping cart. Now, we've seen how we've got a lot of our settings already ready to go, and most of those are already set by default in JigoShop. So really, you can get to this stage pretty fast, where you're going to go to products over here on the side. Remember, there's JigoShop, then it's products, then it's orders. Those have all been created by the plugin. So I go to products. And I'm going to add new. Now, there's a couple of strategies I could take here. I could start adding products, and I could put their categories over here, because just like in the rest of WordPress posts, you can add a new product category as you're going along here, right? You could put it in, you could make it a child of another category, and so forth. So you could do it that way. You could go straight to the product categories page and do them all at once, or do a large number of them at least entering them here. So for example, I'm going to just put in plates, for instance, and I don't need to worry about the slug that's automatic. There's no parent. I don't need a thumbnail for this particular one, although I could do that. I'm just going to put that in there. There we go. So now we've got our plates added there, and it would show the thumbnail if there was one there. We'll talk about that later when we're dealing more with images. But you can have, and it will be nice to have, a standard image for the category. And then the other one I've got is bowls. So those are our two main ones that we're going to have. Again, I just go down here. I could add the image, add new product category. It doesn't come back to the top for you, so remember to scroll back up. There we go. So now we've got these set up. And then I want to make sure I've got soup bowls in here. And this is where you want to give some thought to your structure. And of course, we've talked more about that generically about setting up your shopping cart. But this is where it comes in handy and you decide soup bowls is, of course, a child of bowls. And you could go on and on like that. So that's one way to do it, especially if you've got your structure sort of already laid out. and You want to put it in all at once. Then we go over to add new product. Now we're actually going to put in a product. And we're going to call this one, I think we'll call this one Blue Soup Bowl. How's that? All right. Now, here's where we would put our description of the bowl. All right. And we're just going to say this is a great bowl for having your soup. All right. So there's description. Obviously, you'd put in a lot more there. This is for the detail page. When someone's actually clicked through to the bowl, they're going to see all this detail here. So you can put in lots here. And I'm going to make sure that I check off that it's under soup bowls here for a product category. Now, here's the meta box that's being added by JigoShop here for your product data. What kind is it? Now, there's simple, there's downloadable. That means it's going to have to have a URL and so forth. It could be grouped with other ones. There's some others here. You can even have affiliate, which is pretty cool. You could have a product which you don't even sell through your shopping cart and your checkout. It literally would just go straight through to your affiliate, but it would have your code and everything in there. Okay. There's your regular price. And in this case, we're going to put in, let's say, $25. Again, don't put in any currency symbol because that's added for you automatically and you get to choose that. Do you want a sale price on it? And you can do this in dollars or percentages. And, and this is what I really like, you can also schedule it. Okay, so you can say, start it on sale this day, end it on that day. So that's kind of handy to have. If you've got this here, you just leave this like this. It'll still come back. See when I click on it, it still comes back. That's okay. It's just, that's just a reminder. It's not actually there in the database. Okay, so technically that's empty right now. All right. Do you want to feature this product? Right now, let's not worry about that. We're not going to feature it, so that's good. Now we go to Advanced. There's another tab here. Is it taxable? So this is really handy because it means that you could have a couple of items that aren't taxable. Say a food item I know in British Columbia and Canada is not taxable, for instance. So you might have that. Then what kind of class is it in for your taxes? And this depends on what you've got set up in your taxes, and we'll deal with that later. Weight and dimensions. Now, these become very important for shipping. I know, for example, with Canada Post, they only work through their automated system using weights and dimensions, and they have to be in metric. Okay, so you would select that in your settings in JigoShop, and then this is where you would fill in the weight, the length, the width, and the height, and so on. 
Visibility, this is kind of handy. I'm not sure exactly how you would use this. Like, typically, if it's in my catalog, I'd want it to be searchable, but you never know. But certainly, hidden is useful. Let's say, for example, you're not going to have that item for six months. You might want to just hide it entirely. On the other hand, you might want to put a note on it saying, not available at the moment, sorry, but it's coming back in six months or something like that. It depends how you want to handle it, but you've got options anyway. This is for personalized items. Do you want it engraved or stitched or whatever you want to do? And by default, of course, it's set to no. And then if you've got a limit on how many characters can be personalized, you would put them in there. Anyway, that doesn't come up all that often for people. Now, featured image. This is very important. This is where we're going to put our featured image. This is the one that's going to be used by the system to say, this is the default image for this plate that we're going to use in the catalog and elsewhere. So let's go find one here. I need to find our blue bowl. Where was that here? Cobalt blue wide lip bowl. That sounds like a soup bowl to me. Let's try it anyway. All right, it's uploading it. There it is. Perfect. And I just scroll down to here. I don't choose any of these items here. I could change the title. Now, in my case, I've got it named already, so it's used that for the title. I could take out the dashes and so forth. I won't worry about it right now. Use as featured image. That's the key. And look what happens over here. It now shows up as our featured image. And you'll see what happens when we publish this. Okay. We've now got a product. Now, if I go over here, how do I access my product? Well, don't forget, we haven't put our pages onto the menu. So I have to go over to menus. And I go down here, and the default is shop. Now, you could change the name of this, of course, but I add this to here. I save menu. I go back over to here, and I refresh. And now when I click on shop, I'm going to see my main catalog page. There it is. And there's my blue soup bowl. I click through to it. And now I've got my soup bowl, $25, add to cart. If I had reviews, they would show up in there, all that sort of thing. Okay, so we've added our first product, and we're ready to move on to things like images, like we saw. You notice back there, that looks a bit distorted. And there's a reason for that. We need to change something in the settings for it. And then we'll move on to manipulate our images and our products.